Hello everyone. Happy New Year. So, today we are going to solve a problem based on permutations. This problem is not like our usual contest problem. It entails a bigger idea in group theory involving permutation groups. This problem classifies the permutation group into odd permutation and even permutations. We will now take a closer look into the problem. Here is the problem. We will first solve this and we will address the classification in regard to the permutation groups. As you could see, we have numbers from 1 to n and irrespective of the value of n, the question is not going to change. It is permitted to swap any two numbers. By the word swap, they mean you select two numbers and you interchange their positions. If 2007 such swappings are done, then is it possible to arrive at the original configuration after those many number of operations? So this is the question. So when I see this question, I think about the parity of the number given. 2007 is an odd number. So we could do something with the odd number of 2007. All right. So to proceed, let us consider two columns. And we first consider the order of the numbers as 1, 2, 3, 4 till n minus 2, n minus 1 and n. Enumerate all the pairs of numbers say 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4 and so on till n minus 1 comma n. You will get n choose 2 number of pairs and remember that these are unordered pairs. That is, we consider 1 comma 2 same as 2 comma 1. So you need not write it twice. So we enumerate all the unordered pairs. And what are these two columns? The first column describes the different ordering of the numbers in the pair with respect to the sequence under consideration. So different order. Whereas the second column corresponds to same order. So if you have a pair, say 1 comma 2, if the numbers in the sequence under consideration that is this sequence, if they are in that same order, then we place it in the second column that is same order. If 1 and 2 are in different order that is 2 occurs before 1, then we place it in the first column, also the column named different order. So this makes sense because all the pairs are such that the left number is less than the right number, which is also the condition on the sequence under consideration initially. So we are good to go now. Notice that if you perform one such operation, there will be some redistribution of these unordered pairs to the two columns. And how does that redistribute? So let's perform one operation to understand this. Suppose if I consider swapping the numbers 2 and 5, then what will happen? You get 1, 5, 3, 4, 2, 6, all the way up to n minus 2, n minus 1, n. Notice that the numbers from 6 to n remain unchanged and 3 and 4 remain unchanged, 1 remain unchanged. They are fixed, only 2 and 5 are interchanged. Alright, 
so clearly not all pairs have the same order for example the pair 3 comma 5 is not anymore in the same order 5 occurs before 3 so let's move it to the first column named a different order so you get 3 comma 5 here not only that you get also 4 comma 5 because 5 occurs before 4 but in the previous setting we had 4 before 5 so now 4 comma 5 is in the different order we will also have 2 comma 3 because 3 occurs before 2 and also 2 comma 4 and we will also have 2 comma 5 because 5 occurs before 2 and that's it these are the only unordered pairs that are going to be listed in the different order column all the other pairs will occur in the same order column so what did you notice from this are you able to observe certain phenomena related to parity here yes the number of elements in the first column is odd in this operation and i claim that it's always going to be odd irrespective of the number you choose to swap what's the logic behind this what's the phenomenon behind the parity being always odd so consider two numbers x and y that are numbers which are going to be swapped now and let's say there are t numbers in between them excluding x and y maybe t is zero so we only consider that x occurs before y in that sequence when you swap x and y when you swap x and y the resulting sequence will be as follows you have y and you have the exact t numbers between y and x and then you have the number x well now if you consider the orders that got changed by this swap it will include either one of the numbers x or y if it's like including two numbers which are neither x nor y then that's not going to be changed because that is fixed in the swap so you cannot have that pair to move from one column to the other so remember we are only considering the number of unordered pairs that go from one column to the other say from the second column to the first column or say from the first column to the second column clearly if both are not x or y it's gonna be in the same column as it was earlier so assume that one of the numbers is x then the other number can have these t possibilities which gives us t such pairs t such pairs and by the way x can occur as the first element or the second element we just don't care the point is that x and that element in those p numbers are now changing their order because x occurred before that element and after the swap x occurs after that element well the similar argument holds true for y you have y comma those t numbers which provides another t pairs so we have thus considered the pairs with x and those t pairs with y and those t numbers and now we will consider the pair x comma y because that by itself has changed their order because x occurred before y and now x occurs after y so you could see the total number of pairs that changed from one way to the other is 2t plus 1 because t plus t plus 1 that means there are 2t plus 1 pairs that 
transition from first column to the second or the second column to the first. Okay, now we observe that 2t plus 1 is an odd number. 2t plus 1 is an odd number. So, in the start of the sequence, we had all the unordered pairs in the second column. That is the same order column. The first column is our different order. Now, in each move, there is odd number of elements moving out and coming in of the same order column. Thus, the number of elements, say it is n choose 2, so let's call it as just capital N, the number of unordered pairs, we subtract or add odd number from this inner move. And maybe in the next move, we either subtract or add odd number. And then this just goes on. In each move, we subtract, remove or add or append odd number of such pairs and this is done 2007 times which is itself an odd number. So what do you infer from here? Odd number is considered odd number of times either subtraction or addition that doesn't matter the final resulting parity of that is going to be odd. You add or subtract odd numbers odd number of times, the parity will be odd. And thus, when you subtract n or add n with an odd number, it's not going to be the n. It's shifting the parity. So hence, after 2007 moves, it cannot reach the same number n. But we know that the second column should have exactly n elements because it should reach the same configuration as it started with. Hence, original configuration cannot be obtained in odd number of moves. So thus, n cannot be equal to n plus or minus odd implies, implies it is impossible to get back to original configuration. Now this is why they have classified the permutation into two categories. But before which, the group theory suggests that any permutation can be expressed as composition of swaps or transpositions. For example, if you consider the permutation 3, 2, 1 of 1, 2, 3, then it can be obtained by swapping 1 and 3. Or if you consider the permutation 3, 1, 2, then first you swap 2 and 3. And then you swap 1 and 3. So it's the combination of 2, 3 and 1, 3. So through this, you can obtain any permutation, not only for n equal to 3. So this implies that any permutation can be represented as composition of swaps. So we noticed that the identity permutation cannot be expressed as composition of odd number of swaps. So thus, it must be even number of transpositions or swaps, whichever you consider. And hence, identity permutation is called as even permutation. So by this logic, you may conclude that any permutation which can be represented as odd number of swaps cannot 
have an equivalent representation using even number of swaps because if it has then you can shift all the swaps to one side making it even number of swaps plus odd number of swaps as the identity permutation thus identity permutation is expressed as odd which gives us a contradiction thus any permutation can only be represented as even number of swaps or composition of odd number of swaps but not by both this gives us a rigid way to classify permutations into two categories one is odd permutation other is even permutation and identity element is an even permutation and that's what we have proved in this problem essentially so when you learn group theory and permutation groups you will get more deep into this and you will see the purpose and applications of this in multiple problems so i hope you enjoyed the problems you can comment out your own ideas on this and maybe own methods to solve this let's meet in the next video and solve more intriguing problems thank you everyone bye